Any question up to this? So what I was talking about, edema of the renal losses of proteins, right? Edema of renal losses of protein. Yes, please, you have a question. Yeah. Right. He was just asking that uh, if a female who was having breast cancer, then he developed edema of the arm non-pitting. It means that lymphatic metastasis are there. Answer is yes. Uh, swelling of arm in a patient with breast cancer is an ominous sign. She is going to very advanced stage of the disease. I will teach you someday breast cancer. All right. Let's come back. So we were talking about that. What is happening? Heavy protein urea. Proteins level could not be maintained in spite of the compensatory effort by the liver. Hypoproteinemia, generalized edema, especially starting with periorbital region, and generalized edema is all over the body. So we call it anasarca, but it is more in the dependent area. Eventually, if patient is all the day mobile, it will be more in the leg. If patient is uh, lying in the bed, more in the back, depending upon, right? Gravity will distribute the edema as well. This is one thing. Secondly, these patients have more mechanisms of edema also. Tell me one thing, that this patient who is losing protein here and developing hypoproteinemia here and losing the fluid to the what? Tissue spaces. So blood volume in these patients will be less than normal or more than normal blood volume in a patient with this disease is less than normal or more than normal? Yes, this is less than normal because all the body is edematous, water everywhere, but not in circulation because from where the edema fluid came, out of circulation. Is that right? So the blood volume is less. When blood volume is less, do you think renal perfusion will be more or less? And if renal perfusion is less, Kidneys start producing extra amount of renin. So in these patients, another mechanism which is activated is renin angiotensin aldosterone excess system. Primary mechanism of edema is hypoproteinemia, but secondary mechanisms will be triggered then. So what really happens in these patients that as generalized edema become more and volume of the blood in the circulatory system become less, kidney may develop hypoprotein, hypoperfusion. So reduced blood flow to the kidney will trigger the renin production and you know the renin in the blood will convert angiotensin 1 into angiotensin. Wrong. Renin will convert angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1 and angiotensin 1 will be converted by angiotensin converting enzyme in the lungs into angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 can constrict the vessels, by in so increase hydrostatic pressure, so bring more edema. Secondly, angiotensin 2 will act on zona glomerulosa of adrenal cortex and adrenal cortex will release aldosterone and aldosterone will go to the principal cells of the nephron and reabsorb extra amount of sodium and water. So sodium and water is held in the body. So kidney strongly, staunchly hold salt and water in the body. This salt and water which is unduly held in the body will add to the blood volume. Right? It is in a way kidney is trying to compensate the low blood volume. But this extra salt and water which is returned to the circulation, circulation cannot hold within its own chambers. Why circulation cannot hold? because it has low proteins. So this retained salt and water will again leak into tissues. Because, because of hypoproteinemia, kidney try to compensate by retaining salt and water, but because circulation is poor in protein, so this salt and water cannot be retained in circulation and it also adds further to the edema. Then what happened? During all this, blood become Hemodiluted or hemoconcentrated? Blood will become? Hemoconcentrated, of course, out of the blood. Fluid is going into tissue. So remaining blood become concentrated. So patient 
blood or plasma osmolality will be more or less more. more so blood will become hyper or smaller blood will become in these patients hyper or smaller and this hyper or smaller blood when it will pass through the hypothalamus there are some areas in hypothalamus remember hypothalamus is in central nervous system so there are some areas in hypothalamus which have osmoreceptors they have special neurons which sense the blood osmolality as soon as blood osmolality become high those osmoreceptors trigger the release of ADH antidiuretic hormone ADH rush to the nephron and last part of the nephron under the influence of ADH retains further water and this further retained water cannot be held in circulation again leak into edema you are understanding what's happening so the multiple secondary mechanisms of edema formation are also activated so patient really develops very very severe edema is it right he developed severe edema so what patient has developed up to now let's make a triangle that patient has developed problem number one was heavy protein urea that led to what hypo yes proteinemia and that led to what generalized edema is it difficult to understand it's too easy like kid's story isn't it you lose the heavy proteins proteins become less here it cannot hold the water so water goes out then remaining blood gets hemoconcentrated so adh come remaining blood flow to kidney become less renin angiotensin aldosterone system comes is it difficult it's dangerously easy isn't it now meanwhile our funny liver is trying to compensate it is making more and more proteins when it is making more albumin and globulin unfortunately it also makes more lipoproteins when liver in pump up its protein synthesis mechanisms it start producing unfortunately those proteins also in excessive amount which are concerned with the lipids lipoproteins are produced excessively so lipid system is now normal or disturbed disturbed, disturbed. so in a practical way we can say when liver is synthesizing excessive proteins lipoproteins are there with the lipoproteins lipids are there so patient develop hyper lipidemia this is the next thing the hypoproteinemia triggers the liver and liver will start producing eventually right and the result will be that patient will develop hyper lipidemia which lipids will go up ldl will go up intermediate density lipoproteins will go up very low density vldl will go up triglycerides will not be cleared they will be going up do you think these are good news for the patient no no and if this disease become chronic patient will develop more cardiac problem than coronary artery events and other atherosclerosis related problems will be there and the worst thing which will happen all these bad lipids going up and some patient hdl will go down go down so we don't call it hyperlipidemia because some lipids are going up and other are going down even the total lipids go up especially plasma cholesterol goes up some people call it just dyslipidemias right but for practical purpose you must remember that there is hyperlipidemia sometimes this hyperlipidemia is so severe that if you take the venous sample of the blood and put into a tube you will find that number one their blood is darker than other people because it is hemo concentrated and number two at the top of the tube at the top of the blood you will find lot of yellow color material what is that floating lipids i have seen this thing myself right that when you are taking the sample lipids come at the top 